Hello, this video will show you the essentials of setting up an Adobe Connect web conferencing meeting room for your course. This provides you and your students with a virtual room in which to meet online. I will show you the basic steps of setting up a room in your course, plus an overview of some of the key features. There will be more lessons later on other useful aspects of this tool. Adobe Connect enables you to have meetings and hold classes online in real time with your students. If you wish to, you can run the class almost exactly as you would in a face-to-face -face situation using the range of tools available to you in Adobe Connect. To set up your Adobe Connect meeting room, first turn editing on, then choose add an activity or a resource in the section of the course from where you want students to enter the virtual room click Add. You'll be given some fields in which to type the name of your Adobe Connect meeting room or a welcome or introduction message to participants. Type in a name which would make sense to yourself and your students. I am thinking this room will be a place for my students to meet in real time to discuss all aspects of e-learning, so I will call it e-learning discussion room. In settings, there is a space to put the URL or web address of the meeting room. This URL won't be available until we have finished setting up the room, so we'll leave this blank for now. You can set it up to be public or private, but in Wattle it will need to be set to public if you want your students to access it. It won't really be available to the public as it is inside the Wattle environment. It is possible to set up templates for the configuration of the room and then choose from a drop-down list here, but I will leave it at the default. We now need to enter the dates for the duration of time we want the meeting room to be available to students. If you intend using the room for a full semester, then it's best to make the start date the day you are setting it up and the end date the very last day of semester. If you intend to record your meetings, leave the next item checked. That will mean the recordings will be visible and available to course participants. In common module settings, you can show or hide the room. If you want to hide it until you are ready for your students to access it, select Hide, then reveal later when you wish them to access it. You can organise groups to access meeting rooms, but we will deal with this in another segment on Adobe Connect. I will leave this one as No Groups. You can also put in restrictions on access according to dates and student IDs if you wish, but I am not going to restrict access. And I will leave it to students to manually mark the activity as completed and will not enable the date to expect completion. I will now save the room and return to the course. Here is the icon and link to my e-learning discussion room. Clicking on the link takes me to a page where we see some information about the room, including the web address or URL. You can send this link to your students for them to go straight to the meeting room, or you can leave it to them to enter it via the link on your main page. Selecting Join Meeting results in a pop-up window appearing on your screen. This is your meeting room. There will also be another smaller pop-up window which is a tutorial taking you through information about pods and how to use them. I'm going to close this down but you should watch this tutorial in your own time as it has very useful information for first-time users about how to arrange this Adobe Connect screen. Firstly, let's look at some of the icons along the top. The speaker icon is green which means it's turned on in your room. Selecting the small downwards arrow next to this icon gives you options to mute the speakers and to adjust the volume. If I select the Adjust Volume option, it brings up a slider for me to adjust my volume between low and high. It is always worth checking this slider if you are having audio issues and cannot hear sound. Moving along to the next icon, this is the icon for the microphone. As it is greyed out, this means the microphone is not active. The small downwards arrow reveals two options to connect audio or to select your microphone. 
Choosing Select Your Microphone will take you to a sub-menu of possible devices, although usually Adobe Connect will automatically choose the headset if you are using one. Choosing Connect My Audio results in the microphone icon turning green, indicating it is now switched on. Looking at the options again, you can see how you can mute your microphone here also or disconnect it altogether. You can also adjust the microphone volume using a slider similar to the one for adjusting the speaker volume. You can also mute the microphone and speakers simply by clicking on the icons themselves. The next icon is the one for the web camera. As it is greyed out, the web camera is not connected. Clicking on the icon turns it green and as you can see, there I am showing up in the video pod. I can stop it by selecting Stop my webcam in the webcam drop down menu. The other participants in the course will not be able to see me until I select Start sharing either in this menu or in the video pod. Now I have selected Start sharing and you can see me live on the screen. If I want participants to share their webcams, I need to select Enable Webcam for Participants. Moving along to the next icon, as you can see, it is a figure of a person raising their hand. This is a signal that participants can select, which will show up next to their name in the list of attendees, indicating they wish to speak. Beneath this icon, when you click the downward menu, you can see a list of icons which are emoticons, or means of communicating. I have selected the Speak Louder sign, which is a request to the person who is talking to speak louder. You can see that I now have this symbol next to my name in the attendee list. Now I have selected the smiley face to indicate laughter. I can clear my own signals by selecting Clear Status at the bottom of the list. I can also clear them by clicking on them next to my name. The person hosting the session with moderator status can also clear emoticons by clicking them where they appear next to attendees' names. Now let's look at the pods. Pods are the small boxes you see within the Adobe Connect screen. The video pod is where you can quickly start or stop your webcam and see yourself and other participants when they enable their webcams. There is a pod for files. This is where you can upload files that you wish to share with students and where they can also add their files. You can resize these pods as you wish. By selecting the downward arrow next to the pods item on the top bar, you will see the different options for pods. Share allows you to share a new pod and has a specific one called Share Whiteboard. This is a neat collaborative tool that students can draw and type into for brainstorming, for example. I will resize it to fit better into my screen. The chat pod has been added here and as you can see, there has been some chat happening in a previous session. You can take part in chat by typing into the field at the bottom of the pod, then hitting enter. The attendee list is also a pod. By hovering the mouse over the name of a participant, you have a number of options. You can make them a presenter or a participant, which gives them control of the screen as presenter or ensures that they don't have control as a participant. A private chat can occur where no one else sees what you and the participant are chatting about. This is sometimes useful if a participant is having technical problems or you wish to ask them to participate more, for example. Under Meeting in the top menu bar, you will see there are quite a few options. The most important of these is Audio Setup Wizard. All participants should run this wizard prior to a session to check that their audio is fully functional. Proceed through the steps following the prompts. When you hit Play Sound, there should be a piece of music that you can hear. If you can't hear it, you'll need to have a look at the settings in Adobe Connect and or your desktop. This will be dealt with in another segment. You will then be given an opportunity 
to make sure the correct microphone is selected. The drop down arrow shows you all the possible options and it should be set to your headphone. Mine is correct as it is set to my Logitech USB headset. You will then be prompted to test the microphone on your headset by recording yourself speaking and then playing it back. As you can see, I have full sound for my mic. Testing the silence will let you know if there's too much background noise. If you have completed the Audio Setup Wizard and everything is working, you will be ready to start your meeting. If you have hit problems with either the microphone or speakers, there are other checks you can do. This will be covered in another segment on Adobe Connect, and there is also a student guide to Adobe Connect that has similar information. Finally, let's look at the symbols for different layouts on the right hand side bar. My screen looks a bit messy and I can experiment with these different layouts. If I'm not happy with any of these, I can make my own layout and save it as a template in the Layouts tab above. We will have a quick look at the options available under Share My Screen in the centre of your screen. This gives us a quick link to different sharing options. You can share your whole screen, a document or a whiteboard. Selecting Share Document takes you to a list of documents previously uploaded or you can select Browse My Computer to add a new one. I will select one already uploaded. The document now appears on the screen and all participants can see it. This is a good way to collaborate on a document. As presenter or moderator you can type into a Word document or in this PDF document there is an option in the Sharing Documents screen above to draw on it. To stop sharing the document select Stop Sharing in the top right. Now I will select Share Whiteboard and it gives me a fresh whiteboard to work with. The toolbar on the left side of the whiteboard gives us options to add to the whiteboard such as typing some text or using the brush icons to draw. Using the select arrow at the top we can select anything we have drawn and delete it or move it. If we are using the whiteboard to demonstrate something we can use the pointer by clicking on the pointer icon at the top right of the whiteboard. We can move the pointer around the whiteboard to point at different things. Finally I want to show you how you can also make presentations on the Adobe Connect screen. Under the central icon for sharing, choose Share Document. Choose Browse My Computer for your presentation. Choose the presentation you wish to show from your files and choose Open. The file is now uploading and converting for use in Adobe Connect. This may take a few minutes depending on the size of the file. It now appears on your screen. As you can see, in this case, I have other pods surrounding it for files, chat and notes. I could hide these if I wished, but I'm leaving them there as participants may wish to chat, take notes and share files while watching. You can click through the slides using the small arrows on the left. Also, by clicking on the Show Sidebar icon next to these arrows, you will get a sidebar with each slide listed so you can navigate through your presentation like this if you wish. To hide the sidebar, just click the icon again. If you go to the menu in the top right corner, you will see numerous options. One of these is Show Presentation Play Bar. Selecting this gives you a small bar at the bottom right of your presentation. Clicking on the play button will result in an automatic playing of your slideshow. You have a play, pause and back and forth buttons for this. That's all for this brief introduction to Adobe Connect. Thank you for watching. I hope you are able to use this information to add an Adobe Connect meeting room to your course.